Right, Stephen, do you have any, any, any belief whatsoever that Rishi Sunak even wants to pull out the ECHR, let alone whether or not you think he should? I don't believe he does, in all honesty. Uh, the problem I've got here is that basically they're, they're whistling in the wind. Um, on the one hand, they're trying to talk tough, but in fact, there's a complete lack of action here. We all know, you know, and you know, you've been leading on this for God's sake, you know, we should actually be placing people in secure accommodation as soon as they arrive, whether it's at, you know, Marston Air Base or whatever, who knows, but they should actually be assessed, fingerprinted, fingerprinted, don't forget that, and they should then be classified and we know where we are. At the moment, the, the, the conflict between the European Commission on Human Rights and British legislation is a straw man. It's a complete nonsense. We've got the power to have enough legislation within our own hands, but then to say that whatever we do is going to be compliant with the European legislation, well, you know, that's, I'm sorry, that makes a nonsense. Either we do or we don't. I'm very, very proud that we do stick to the human rights law that we have in the rest of Europe, and I'm very proud to be a member of a country that yeah. does that. But to try to blame that on an utter, total failure, a complete incompetence of the Home Office, which is, as everybody knows, utterly not fit for purpose, and the Border Force, which has not been given the resources, and the government, which is simply not taking this seriously. Mm. From where I'm sitting, all the Tories currently have to do, if they want to, quotes unquote, win, by the way, there's no winners on this, but win on the channel yeah. migrant crisis, is to basically just keep shamelessly saying to people like you and I, we're working on the toughest laws, yeah. Oh, look, we might do this. Here's a piece of paper with the ECHR in on it and we'll rip it up. Because currently, Stephen, Labour, with respect, don't really want to do anything. So it's a choice between two poor solutions. Well, I believe you me, you know, Labour does want to do something because we're not totally stupid. You know, we're not the feeling on the street is out there. We're actually talking about, you know, and can you t take a deep breath before I, you hear me finish oh, the end of this sentence? We we're actually talking about ID cards because at the oh. moment, this is a brilliant system where you can wander into the country, go down to a hotel, stroll out of the hotel, get a job in a car wash or get a job in any unregulated workforce. You don't have to prove who you are. And after three years, guess what? You can apply for the regularis regularisation of overstayers and you can get a full, you know, full residence. It's economics in many cases. I'm not denying that there are a huge number of people. And then that really gets my goat is that the people who actually are suffering, you know, the, the women in, in Afghanistan, some of the families in Africa, well, they're, they're not, not going to get ever, near a dinghy. This is the thing. They're Stephen, not going to get I, near a dinghy. These Stephen, are the middle class people whose parents can pay. The people used to come to my surgery every week and say, oh, I paid an agent. You know, you yeah. paid an agent. Where did you get the money from? Well, you know, where did you get the people, money for? But also, Stephen, there is, there is a limit to the public acceptance when you're seeing coach after coach after coach of... Yeah. young men arriving and i'm sorry but at some point someone has to go look shouldn't this really be mostly women and children mostly women and children the most vulnerable people out there one would have thought and in fact the absolute reverse is true and i think it's fair to say that there is a little bit of a mickey take thing going on here how would you feel stephen though about the idea that someone comes over on a boat they get a hearing maybe within a couple of days, they get told that they're not able to get asylum over here and then they're not able to appeal that because in theory that is what Rishi Sunak is at least saying that he wants to do at some point. How would you feel about that? Do you know, the, what I would feel is that that's exactly what we're doing in Sweden. It's what we're doing in Norway. It's what they're doing in a great many other countries in Europe. Some of them less savoury. I mean, I think what they're doing in Hungary is a little bit worrying. Well, yeah, but other yeah. Scandinavian countries, very similar to us, have simply said enough is enough. We simply cannot go on with this. Oh. And we all know that there's a push and a pull factor with this. And the push factor is very often you know, it is impossible for you to stay where you are. We know that. And we should be supportive of the United Nations High Commission yeah. on Refugees. And we should be supportive of them. But the pull factor is the idea that you come here, work yeah. a job, you know, on, on what we used to call on, on the black economy, we've we, grown up now, where people don't pay tax. And as oh. I say, without ID cards, they don't have to prove who they are. I'm sorry. It's an absolute, it's a holiday. Come over okay. here for six months, right. fill your boots, shove off home and build a palace.